Hello, hello, Simon Kemp from Kepios here, bringing you 10 essential takeaways from our Digital 2024 April Global Snapshot Report. As always, you can read our full report and analysis completely for free over on datareportal.com, but this video will guide you through the top headlines and trends in this latest update to our Global Digital Report series. Starting in reverse order at number 10, GWI reports that one in four working age internet users now owns a smartwatch. Ownership of these devices increased by 20% over the past year, suggesting that more than 100 million people may have acquired a smartwatch in 2023 alone. The UAE sees the highest rate of smartwatch ownership, but it's particularly interesting to note that India now ranks third thanks to the proliferation of low-cost devices on e-commerce platforms like Flipkart and Amazon. Now, many people use a smartwatch to keep track of digital notifications, but marketers need to tread carefully here and ensure that any activity targeting smartwatch behaviours adds clear user value, and not just more digital noise. Next up, as the brand celebrates its 30th birthday, data shows that Yahoo is still one of the most popular destinations on the web. Estimates of Yahoo's global traffic vary, but if we combine activity across yahoo.com and yahoo.co.jp, the brand still attracts well over 5 billion web visits per month. And meanwhile, unique visitor data suggests that Yahoo still attracts more visitors than ChatGPT. Yahoo's mail service is the biggest driver of its continued success, but Yahoo's search still attracts more than a billion visits per month, and its finance offerings are also still hugely popular. In at number 8, Reddit ads now reach more than 230 million users. As part of its recent IPO, the company revealed that it attracts an average of 73 million active users per day, but the company's ad reach data offers some even more compelling numbers. Canada and the United States see the highest rates of active Reddit use, with the company's ad reach data suggesting that over 40% of people over the age of 13 in both these countries use the platform each month. Reddit is also very popular in ANZ, Singapore and Northern Europe, but it seems to be somewhat less popular in countries where English isn't as widely spoken. Story number 7 shows that gaming is gaining. GWI's research reveals that video games have reached their most popular level in three years, with close to 85% of working age adults saying that they play games on at least one device. The global gaming audience has increased by almost 5% over the past year, with smartphone gamers seeing the biggest gains. But perhaps the most striking finding in this data, and contrary to stereotypes, is that video games are consistently popular across demographics. Now, young men are still the biggest gamers, but younger women are only just behind their male peers. And what's more, more than 7 in 10 internet users aged 55 to 64 say that they're gamers, and video games appeal almost equally across genders in this age group. Next up, social media user numbers continue to grow. Kepios analysis points to an increase of more than a quarter of a billion new user identities over the past year, taking the global user total to 5.07 billion. Unique user identities have increased by more than 5% since this time last year, and while this figure may not represent unique individuals, it suggests that more than 62% of the world's population now uses social platforms every month. So, don't let those clickbait headlines fool you. Social media still ain't dead in April 2024, and user growth shows no signs of slowing anytime soon either. And we're sticking with misrepresentation for story number 5. Contrary to what you might have read in the media recently, young people are in fact the biggest users of search engines. So, while it is true that social platforms are younger people's primary destination when they're researching potential purchases, that doesn't mean that they've abandoned Google. And moreover, data also shows that younger people are in fact the biggest users of email, while they're also just as likely to visit brand websites as their parents' generation are. So, the clear takeaway here is that you need to go beyond media headlines if you want to build a digital strategy that aligns with people's real online behaviours. In at number 4, staying in touch with friends and family is now the primary reason why Gen Z uses connected tech. Now, this is the first time we've seen finding information slip from the top of this ranking, but there's only a slight difference between the top two motivations. 
Finding information remains the top digital motivator across internet users as a whole, but GWI's data shows that online socialising has been closing the gap over the past few years. It's important to remember that these motivations are not mutually exclusive though, and both will remain critically important for many years to come, regardless of their rank order. However, marketers would do well to keep evolving digital priorities in mind. The digital landscape may seem like it's changed dramatically over recent years, but giving people something to talk about is just as important as it was back in the earliest days of social. Story number three this quarter is that people's overall media consumption has fallen over recent months. Data from GWI suggests that the typical global internet user has shaved roughly half an hour off their daily media activity since this time last year, with press media seeing the biggest declines. However, social media and TV consumption have also fallen by four minutes per day, equating to a decline of more than two hours per month. Daily internet time has remained steady over the past year, but GWI's data points to a quarter-on-quarter -quarter decline, erasing the gains in internet use that we saw during the course of 2023. In at number two, an excellent new data set from Data AI shows that YouTube has the largest active user base of all the top social media apps. This new active user index reveals that YouTube has more than 15% more active app users than WhatsApp and Facebook, who are its next nearest rivals. Instagram ranks fourth by active app user numbers, but it's interesting to note that TikTok only places sixth, and YouTube still has more than twice as many active app users as TikTok does. Across these top apps, WhatsApp saw the biggest gain in active users over the last three months of 2023, while Pinterest ranked second. TikTok added fractionally more active app users than YouTube did, but many of these other platforms, including Instagram, Facebook and X, actually saw their app user numbers decline during the last quarter of 2023. But our top story in April 2024 is that more than two in three people on Earth are now online. Kepios analysis reveals that 5.44 billion people around the world used the internet in April 2024, equating to 67.1% of the global population. And this means that internet users have now reached supermajority status, marking yet another momentous milestone on the world's digital journey. And user numbers continue to see strong growth too. Data from a variety of reputable sources suggests that global internet users have increased by 3.4% over the past 12 months, with 178 million new users coming online for the first time since this time last year. Now, at a worldwide level, 11 countries now enjoy internet adoption rates of 99% or more, while more than half of the population is online in a total of 179 different nations. However, 12 countries still struggle with internet adoption rates of less than 25%, and more than 2.5 billion people remain offline in April 2024, so there's still a long way to go before we reach universal connectivity. That's all we've got time for in this Top 10 Takeaways video, but don't forget that you can dig deeper into all of these stories and loads more of our latest insights over on datareportal.com. If you've got any questions about the content that I've covered today, or what these numbers might mean for you, just pop those in the comments or send me a message on LinkedIn. Many thanks as always to We Are Social and Meltwater for making our global digital reports possible, and to our wonderful data partners for allowing us to share their valuable insights. And thanks to you for joining me today too. Remember to subscribe, and I'll see you again for our next round of insights.